you listen to this, hopefully you're going to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to learn from other people's mistakes. Now, a smart person will learn from their mistakes. That's great. But a wise person will learn from other people's mistakes. So learn from what I have done and then change your mindset to where now there's no other route. Welcome to Multifamily Insights. I'm your host, John Kasman, and I want to thank you for joining us for another great episode. Listen, if you are an avid listener of the show, we want to hear from you. Give us your rating and review. We want to hear your honest feedback so we can make this show work harder for your investing needs. But if this is your first time listening or for some reason you just haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Now, we've got a great show because we've got a returning guest. That's right. Today, we're talking to Dustin Heiner. They say you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So if you want to grow as a multifamily investor, you have to spend more time with other multifamily investors. And an easy way to do that is to join our apartment investing mastermind group today. Just go to kasmancapital.com and click on the mastermind button. Now, as a part of this group, you'll get access to expert trainings, group coaching calls, industry news and updates, as well as all of our webinars and workshops, including our three-hour workshop on raising capital. Again, if you want to be around other multifamily investors that can help you scale your portfolio today and grow your network, make sure you're a part of the Apartment Investing Mastermind. Just go to kasmancapital.com and click on the Mastermind button today. Now, Dustin Heiner is the founder of Master Passive Income, Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, and Successfully Unemployed. And he's a real estate investor who was able to make enough passive income from his business to quit his job when he was just 37 years old. Now, with his conference, podcast, YouTube channel, books, courses, and coaching, he now helps other people quit their job by investing in real estate to live the dream life. Let's welcome to the show, Dustin Heiner. Hey, John. Hey, thank you so much for having me on the show again. And it's good to see you again. And I really appreciate you uh, bringing me on. I I just, real estate investing is just, it's changed my life. And real, real estate investing is great, but it's what it affords me to do in my life. Like I don't work. I, I like the term successfully unemployed as well as I just go to the gym in the morning, hang out with my family and then come on podcasts and talk to great people like you. So thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, you started to get into it. And uh, I mentioned before, you know, we had a chance to get you on earlier in the show back on episode 169. So go back and check that out. We'll put that in the show notes. Uh, but for those folks who are not familiar with you or your story, why don't you take two minutes and fill in some of those gaps? Totally. So I didn't start investing in real estate, just like most people. And in fact, I went an entire plan that everybody's always taught. We're always taught this, go to school, get good grades, get in thousands of dollars into debt, go to college, get good grades and get a degree and then hopefully get a job, a career. Um, and so with that, I was doing the exact same thing. I got the most risk averse, stable job I could ever think of. I was working in technology in the local county government in California and for, yeah, obviously for California and, and the government. And so technology is not going away. California is not going away and the government's not going away. Long story short, I tell a whole story of how I actually get laid off. So definitely go listen to the last episode 169. And I even tell you how I did it as well as how you can invest in real estate. So you need to listen to that other show. So listen to 169. But I got laid off. And in getting laid off, I realized that I can't let this happen to me again. You know, I lost the ability to feed my family. My wife just had her fourth child. And literally, like two weeks later, after paternity leave, I go back to work and I get laid off. So with that, I realized I need to make a change. And the change was I knew I needed to be an investor, but life started getting in the way, having kids. And then I stopped and said, no longer will I ever tell anybody when they asked me the question, Dustin, what do you do? I would usually reply, well, I work for the county doing technology. Well, I'm basically projecting out to the world and the person I'm talking to that I put the value in myself is coming from my job. My value doesn't come from my job. My value comes from my God and from myself and from my family. So I started telling everybody, as soon as I real, as soon as I got laid off, I started telling everybody I'm an investor. Now, so happens that 100% of my money comes from my job. That's now my part-time job. I'm a full-time investor because every listen to this, you need to realize if you're working for somebody else, you're not getting paid what you're worth. Nobody will ever pay you what you're worth. This is how you'll know. Your boss is paying you just enough to keep you working without quitting, but not so much money that takes money out of your pocket or their pocket. And if they did, they would go broke. So instead, the what I and John and I both know is that instead of getting paid by somebody else, the value that we put on ourselves is what we tell to the world. I started telling everybody I'm an investor, started buying property after property, each you know, rental property, each one making me $250 or more in passive income. Eventually I had 30 plus properties and 
I was able to quit because I had so many properties now and I was able blessed to lay off my boss and say, here, here, boss, I'm laying you off. But all that is because I realized that I needed to make a change in who I knew I was. I knew I was not the, you know, just employee, but that's what I would tell everybody. Changing my mindset to where now I am an investor, that put me on a, a path and a trajectory to actively invest. And then people started seeing me as an investor. Deals started coming. Money started coming you know, for people that wanted to invest with me. And then fast forward now, being successfully unemployed at 37 years old, I was blessed to be able to quit my job. Now I have so much free time that I love just going on podcasts and, you know, writing books and and helping people to invest in real estate. Now with a, the conference that I put on, the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, it's all about giving. No sales pitch. We You will never see, hey, run to the back and go give us money. You'll never see that. It's all about helping people because I make my money in real estate. Everything else that I make money from, I, it flows right into real estate. But that's, the big, uh, like a sum up nutshell of everything <laughs> about me. Yeah, Justin, I, I love it, man. And the thing that really jumped out to me is uh, you talked about your story and, you know, working in technology for the state of California, uh, getting let go after your fourth child. And I can only imagine what that was like. I know we talked about that before, but um, the amount of stress you must have been facing and feeling, but being able to start to use that to pivot the way you approached it, the, the way you thought about things. And we always talk about like um, our mindset and how important mindset is. And you said some things that I think were really key and it, it's kind of nuanced, but the way you think and talk, I think is so powerful in the way we operate. And you said, for instance, that, you know, you're wearing this shirt right now. You talk about being successfully unemployed. You said that you laid off your boss, right? So instead of you just quitting your job, you didn't just quit. You let your boss go. Um, you know, little things like this and the way we frame it up can be powerful. Talk more about that part of it, right? Because there's obviously the technical, you know, blocking and tackling approach to investing in real estate. But for a lot of people, they have a hard time with the confidence or taking that next step or taking action to actually invest. So talk to us about kind of that that trigger or that switch going from, you know what, let me reposition the way I think about this so I can move forward. So when I first started investing, I bought my first property in 2006 and then I just stopped. I, I knew I needed to, but my mindset hadn't been switched from being an employee. And because we're all basically conditioned to be an employee, like a cog in a wheel, just making sure that things go. The ones of us that break out of that mold, then we're the ones that employ the employees, which I'm not saying that's anything wrong to be an employee. I'm just not built for that. I'm much more built to employ people. But then it was breaking out of that mold, that mindset of, and it's even more the mindset. Like you're so conditioned, like this is the only way because you don't know what else is out there. And then when I bought my first property, life started getting in the way and I didn't have that mindset where I was now had a, a, not just a goal, it was a deadline. So in 2006, I think it was like 26 or something like that. I told myself, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a deadline because that mindset shift only works if you work towards it. Like if you just give up on that mindset shift and you give up on the idea of investing, then it just kind of goes away. And it doesn't actually happen. You need to actually have your you know one step in front of the other because you have a either a plan or a deadline. For me, I gave myself a deadline and said, in 10 years, I want to be able to quit my job. And in quitting my job, I also want to be able to provide for my family, not just quit. So that mindset told me now, because it was a big shift, even though I made money through my job, I 100% of my money came through my job. I now started telling everybody my side job is my job, but my full-time job or who I am as an investor. And in that mindset shift, it got me to where I now had priority going towards my investing and my life going towards my investing. And any money that I made that did not go to investing was that much longer before I could actually change and quit and become and, and lay off my boss. But honestly, it didn't happen until I was I literally was shaken. Like oh, I, I was smacked upside the face. I was so woken up because of getting laid off. I literally felt like I was a father, or a failure as a father, a failure as a husband, a failure as a man trying to provide for his family because of this. And that really, of getting laid off. And that shook me so much that I could not shake that off my, like I was always realizing I could get laid off at any time. And then my kids won't have any food to eat. I won't have a roof over their heads. And so that put, it, uh, I guess, a fire underneath me that said, I'm going to keep moving forward. So 
it's absolutely making your mindset shift. And and definitely, like I tell the story so much better in episode 169. So go back and listen to that. But the story, and it really hopefully will resonate with you because I try to express all the feelings, the emotions, and literally the crushing weight of getting laid off, that that's what woke me up. And that hopefully you won't have to go through that. You listen to this, hopefully you're going to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to learn from other people's mistakes. Now, a smart person will learn from their mistakes. That's great. But a wise person will learn from other people's mistakes. So learn from what I have done and then change your mindset to where now there's no other route. Like I basically burning the bridges as I go. I can't turn around. I'm only moving forward in this one direction. But yeah, 100%. I absolutely love that in my mind, I had to change who I was because I was always just an employee, but I had to change that in order to now make traction to actually go forward on the path to become a successful investor. Yeah, Dustin, what, what really stands out to me is we're talking about a mindset shift. And if we were to take that a layer deeper, what we're really talking about is an identity shift. And you made a pivot to go from I am a technology, whatever, to I am an investor, right? And I think that identity shift is so key because we kind of have to envision who we want to become and then start to lay out the path to become that individual. Um, you know, fans of this this show, they hear guests all the time come on and talk about Atomic Habits, which is uh, one of the book I recommend the, the most. And uh, one of the things the author James Clear talks about is the first step is you've got to, you know, develop that identity. If you want to be fit, if you want to lose 20 pounds, you know, it's not that you want to lose 20 pounds, you want to be fit, you want to look good, right? You want to be healthy, you want to have energy. Well, what would a healthy person do? You have to start asking yourself these questions and then start to identify yourself as a healthy person. So because you're a healthy person, you're going to do what healthy people do. And this is how you kind of reaffirm that belief and that position and that identity that you're starting to build. So it's not to say that there's anything wrong with having a job. But there is something limiting if you tie your identity solely to that job. You know, take more control over your financial future, whether it's investing in real estate or being an investor in general, but try to take more control over that and then build that identity where you are more empowered to take control over that future. And that's what you're really getting at. Dustin, for a lot of the, the you know, the folks you're coming across from the podcast, the blog posts, the events you're doing, a lot of people are probably at the early stages of trying to make that mental shift or trying to figure out that identity change. What are some of the challenges people face and how do you help them overcome that? In the challenges that most people face, it really comes down to fear and fear mm -hmm. of the unknown. Now, I love what you were just saying a second ago, because what we need to do is realize it's the who that we need to become, that we need to embody before we even get there. And if we know we want to be an investor, if you want to be a songwriter or a singer, whatever it might be, you need to realize that's who you are. So it's not the what or the how, it's the who. You need to realize who you are. So for me, it was realizing I was an investor. So for everybody listening, for, for you listening, I want you to start thinking about who do you want to be? If that's who you want to be, then you make sure that your brain is literally, you're forcing yourself to Tell yourself that you're a different person internally, like who I am is not now an investor. And then every one of those action steps, that's what leads you to actually become that person of who you are. Now I'm literally an investor. When I told people I was an investor, I wasn't really in a sense. Like I just, that was my mindset. I knew I needed to do. Now I, the who I am, I'm literally an investor. Now, what usually stops most people from any type of investing, let's say you want to invest in gold and silver, or if you want to invest in real estate or uh, uh, art or a business, whatever it might be, it's always... And I've coached hundreds, I've thought thousands of students on now how to invest in real estate. It's fear. It's what it comes down to is fear. And the reason why they, they either listen to my podcast or your podcast here, your, your terrific podcast, where it shows people that nuts and bolts, but then also gets people out of their mindset so they can change. What we need is growth in the area of the place that we're fearful of. Let me explain that. So when you're fearful of something, it's because you've either never done it before or you've heard scary stories or you heard people that have done it poorly in the past. Now, if you start getting that, attacking that fear and addressing the fear that's inside of you, let's say my fear is losing money. Well, I don't want to lose money. And most people, that's a big fear. I don't want to lose money. Another one could be, I don't want to buy a bad investment. That could be another fear or my, my spouse will kill me if I lose money, whatever it might be. But those fear uh, thoughts come in your brain and that stops you. 
And the reason why it stops you is because you've never done it before. Now, what's so great is there are so many great, like keep listening to, to John's podcast here. You keep listening to it. You're going to hear success stories. You're going to hear people that have done it. On top of that, you're also going to be around people that can show you the way. Because once you've done something one time, the fear is basically gone. It might linger a little bit, but you, I've done it before and I can do it again. That is what happens when you learn from somebody else, you get knowledge as well as you get around people who are experts. And I'll give you an example. So my students, I get a lot of people just from listening to the podcast, invest in real estate, reading a book, they'll invest, get my free course and they'll invest. But there are other people that also want people to, you know, somebody to coach them, to walk them through the process, which is what I do. And what's great is when they come to me with that fear, I show them how they're, hey, your fear is not invalid. It's a completely valid fear. We all feel those fears. But here's how we mitigate that fear and get around or hurdle over, jump over those hurdles of the fear because it's already been done before. And when you see that it's been done for, then you can change. Now, my students, when they buy their first property, let's say without me, they're taking one or two years and they still haven't done it. They start working with me within one or two months, they have their first property and they have the business built that it runs itself, runs it automatically. They're making money and passive income. That second property, like the first one's so hard to get to. They're working hard. The second property usually comes within like a couple of weeks, if not a month later, because They've done it once. They've done all the hard work. All the fear is now kind of gone. It's still there. It lingers a little bit. But the more you do it, the more you realize this isn't that bad. So it's fear of the unknown is one of the biggest things. The big hurdle that you get over or how you get over that is with education, networking, getting around other people who are doing it too. Because if you're listening to your aunt and uncle who said, oh, don't do it. We've got a rental property or we invested this back then and we had to change toilets and it was horrible. Well, they're projecting their limitations on you. You can't let their limitations stop you from investing. You need to be around the right people. And that's another big reason why I have my podcast. John has his podcast. Why I created my conference, the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference. It's all about community. It's not about sales pitch. It's not about run to the back and go get us money. It's literally all of us investors coming together and helping each other out. Because as we come together, as you network and know more people, you're going to get encouraged because you're going to see people do it. They're going to help you to do it. And you're going to accomplish it yourself. And then you're going to realize, my goodness, there was no fear that was, that this fear was crippling me. There's nothing there anymore. Yeah, listen, uh, that is so important, understanding the the networking component, right? Being around other people, having mentors, advisors, people in your corner who have done it and and taking advice from the right people, right? I mean, your your aunt, your your cousins, they may love you, but if they lost money in real estate, uh, and they're fearful of real estate because of that. And that's the advice they're giving you is to stay away. You have to understand that the reason they didn't succeed is because they didn't learn from other people. And you said it earlier, right? Uh, smart people, you know, learn from their mistakes, but wise people learn from other people's mistakes. And that's one of the reasons you want to be in a community where you can learn from other people and understand what mistakes they had, but also take a second to recognize that the problem wasn't real estate, right? Plenty of people make money in real estate. The problem was somewhere in the execution of their strategy, maybe the lack thereof of a strategy or maybe a tactical mistake or misstep, but it wasn't the real estate, right? Somewhere in their strategy, they made a mistake and it's not to say, well, real estate's risky or real estate doesn't work. It's yeah, if you don't do it right, it's, it's risky and doesn't work, but there are also lots of people who make money in real estate. So well, strong let me add one those thing. individuals and learn from them. Yeah, absolutely. And you brought up a good word is risk. So fear and risk, those are two things that obviously go right. synonymous together. Now, everybody's risk tolerances are going to be different. And I'm going to tell you, like, if you think, because you've, most people, you go to school, you get good grades, you go to job, get a job. And it's not risky because you just go into the first job and then hopefully you get a next job and kind of grow and get better and get a, a better um, job than the last one. So it's not necessarily as fearful. It's not as risky because you think, I have a secure job. Well, remember, I literally work for the government. Nobody gets fired or laid off in the tech. government, but I exactly in technology. They don't even get tech. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> like, what does this do? Who knows? I don't know. Call Dustin. <laughs> exactly. And I got laid off. So I realize, honestly, even work for the government, doing technology in California. You know, California is not going away. They love their government. So it's literally not going away. I got laid off. I realized it was more risky working for somebody else than working for myself, building my, my own businesses. I literally have five businesses now 
that make me money and they all flow into my river of income. So streams of income flow into my river of income, which is my real estate investing, which is my generational wealth that I will literally be giving to my kids. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the kids in background. I'll literally be giving these to my four kids because as we're building up this generational wealth, seeing that risk of working for somebody else and just getting laid off. Well, instead of that, realizing that risk of that is so much more than me risking investing in real estate. Well, you might risk a little bit of money, of course, or maybe even a lot of money, but you can always make more money. Now, if you're not going to die, then might as well take that risk. But my opinion, so much more risky working for somebody else than working for yourself. And just having multiple streams, like you said, I mean, listen, if you have a job, if you love it, or if you hate it, why not build up some passive income on the side, or at least get some other income coming in on the side so that you have options. And I think that's ultimately where we want to get to, right? Uh, speaking of uh, multiple streams of income or passive income, uh, your website is masterpassiveincome.com. I know you've got a free course on there. So if anybody wants to check that out, then go to masterpassiveincome.com slash free course. Tell us a little bit more about that website and kind of the information folks will get when they go to that website. Yeah, totally. I personally love passive income. And when I realized that such a thing called passive income, I was blown away when I bought one rental property that made me $317. Like I remember the check from my property manager, $317. I did not do a thing. My properties worked for me. I hired experts that did all the work and I got money. And then from there, I just kept buying more and more properties. So, so Master Passive Income is all about real estate investing. You get any passive income through real estate investing. And my, like you said, my free course, I'll literally show you how I and all my students, we build a business anywhere in the country. You love investing out of state personally. And Midwest and into the Southeast and Carolinas are really terrific areas right now. Uh, but I'll show you how to build the business, how to scale the business to quit your job, and also how to make sure you're... It's, it's automatic. You're not going to be doing it yourself because you hire the right people. But uh, really quickly, since you're probably listening on the podcast, you can even text the word rental, R-E-N-T-A-L to 33777, rental to 33777. I'll literally give it to you. But with that, everything that I do is all about giving. I just love giving. In fact, John, you'll appreciate this because you're the same like mine as me. The more people that I serve and the more people that I give to, the better my life gets and the better their life gets. Give you an example. If I buy one rental property, it makes me to a minimum of $250 a month in passive income. And that's a minimum. I have some making me six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month in passive income or more. But I give them a good property to, to live in, as well as a decent rent. Like I don't jack it up. I, I'm a, actually a decent landlord. I make sure it's a good property, but it's also one that they can afford. And so I provide for them. But then also my my employees or the, the property managers, contractors, they want to work. So I help them out. Give you an example also with serving more people. If I give out my podcast, just like you and John with your podcast, everybody, you guys, you just, if you keep coming back week after week and keep listening to John's podcast, that's going to help you grow in your mindset and get networking of people around you. And what's going to happen is what for me was the more things that I gave out to more people, the more fulfilled I get. So when I bought my first property, I felt like it was a great accomplishment. Then when I quit my job, another great accomplishment, but I did not necessarily feel fulfilled. And so here, here I'm going to give, uh, this is all culminating in the four legacies. I'm going to give you just a second for everybody listening. So I didn't necessarily feel fulfilled. I was accomplished, but not fulfilled. When my students now buy their first property, I feel fulfilled because I helped another human being change the course of their life. When I get them, when they actually quit their job or get whatever it is they achieve, they want to, their goals they want to achieve, I feel fulfilled because I've now helped another human being to actually attain what they wanted. Now, all this leads to the four legacies that one should have in our lives or try to leave in our lives. So the first one is a money legacy, that we have enough money to buy whatever we want. That's the first legacy that we all need to strive to. The second one is a time legacy. Money leads into time that you could have time to do whatever you want. And then you have the money to afford whatever you want. The next one leads into a relationship legacy. So money leads into time, time leads into relationships and, you know, shoring up your family relationships, your, your uh, friends and coworkers, your mom, your dad, like building up those relationships. Cause now you have more time. Imagine 40 plus hours of your life, not working for somebody else that you can devote to time and relationships. Then the last one, is the service legacy. So money leads into time, time leads into relationships. And then once those three are short up, then it leads into a service legacy. Now I am blessed to be at that point now where all I do, all the business that I do now are a service business where I'm just trying to, I see a need, 
I think, you know what? I can fulfill that need. Like first it was rental properties or I residential four units and below. People need a place to live. I can provide that service. Great. Check. Because at first it was about money because I want to quit my job. But now it's about service. And then fast forward, I had people asking me, well, Dustin, you invest in real estate. Show me how to do it. So fast forward. I was like, okay, I'll do that. There's a need. Let me figure out how to serve that. Same thing with a podcast. Same thing with coaching. Same thing with my conference. And I also even have a mastermind now where people want to join me in a mastermind. I'm like, okay, here's a need. Let me create a business for that and serve. So John, I know you're of like mind here. The more people that we serve in our life, the better our lives get and the better everybody's life gets. I love it, man. You talked about the four legacies, money, time, relationship, and service. And the more we can service other people, uh, the bigger impact we can have and it's fulfilling. So I appreciate you sharing that and, and kind of, you know, giving us the delineation and the difference there between, uh, you know, being accomplished versus being fulfilled and recognizing that you had done some things, you know, you had some nice wins on the resume, but you didn't really feel complete. You didn't really feel like you were getting those wins, but helping other people that's what really made you feel more fulfilled. So I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, again, for folks who want to check that out, go to masterpassiveincome.com slash free resource and check out that free tool. Uh, I'm sorry, free course, free course, and check out that free tool there. Uh, Dustin, we're going to transition to go to our round of insights. Are you ready? Sure am. Give me a failure or an apparent failure that sets you up for later success. Oh, I, well, I, I talked about, I'll give you two because the one I just talked about getting laid off, that's the first one because that was a failure that literally set me up for success because getting laid off woke me up. That's number one. Um, number two was in my real estate investing business, I followed what the quote unquote gurus were telling me to do. I'm not gonna go into it. I think I shared it on your last episode, so go check out episode 169. But what I did was I bought my first property and I didn't do it right. And my property manager started stealing from me within six months. It was horrible. I basically found somebody that said they were a property manager. I said, hey, you take care of my money and my property and then we'll call it good because I trust you. That was a bad thing. Now, what I do now is I build the business and this is what I talk about in my course. So definitely get that. But we, I built the business and that led me into success now where it's literally a system. Like it's not even like, let's just guess and hope it's gonna know. It's literally a system, a step-by-step -step system. So that failure of hiring somebody that started stealing from me, it's changed my life so dramatically. And then now being able to help so many other people in the future. Give me the book you've recommended or gifted the most in the last year. Ooh, okay. So by far, the number one book I would ever recommend is absolutely the Bible. I read it literally multiple multiple times a day. I read it to my kids every single night, definitely by far the Bible. That changes your life, your future trajectory, everything about you, who you are, by far, number one. The next one, I absolutely love the, um, uh, the Richest Man in Babylon. The Richest Man in Babylon is fantastic. George S. Clausen wrote this book a number of years ago. It's story form like a fiction story, but it teaches principles of financial wisdom. It's so brilliant. Like couple that with uh, 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 Rich Dad Poor Dad, like those are, so, like that changed my mindset so dramatically that it helped me just realize and wake up. So the Bible and Richest Man in, in uh, Babylon. Give me a digital or mobile resource you recommend for your business. Oh, let's see. Definitely, I think for me, well, I'm gonna get be a little, uh, very simple. Number one is uh, email. I do so much work over email. I, I make so much money over email, just buying properties and, and signing documents, all that sort of stuff. That's number one. But I would have to say the. I'll give you one that I use the most recently. It is um, Audible. Like literally, I've been listening to Audible. I love growing. I just, I just pulled up my phone just to look at it, just to verify. Yes, so it's literally right there that I love learning. In fact, I think out of all like fiction books and nonfiction books, by far it's like a hundred, like 98, 98% is, is uh, nonfiction and then 2% is fiction, but Audible because I love learning. I love listening to podcasts, love learning, love listening to sermons. I love learning. So all about learning. Give me uh, your, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna, give me a daily habit that helps you stay focused on your goals. Ooh, daily habit. Well, I would have to say the daily habit for me is exercising. I literally work out five days a week, um, usually about an hour and a half to two hours. I do Olympic lifting. That's where, you know, snatch and clean and jerk type of lifts. Um, but I do that every single or five days a week. 
And the days that I don't, I feel a little off. Like I don't feel as energized, as motivated to take on the world. But I also uh, know that uh, people have been doing those cold plunges. So I've been taking cold showers, you know, just turn on the cold shower. Just that wakes you up that, like, like, whoa, I'm awake now. I'm awake. Uh, let me go take on the world. But exercising and then also uh, doing a cold plunge or taking a cold shower. Give me your number one insight for mastering passive income. Ooh, well, first off, I wish I would have learned about passive income 10 years before I learned about it. I learned about it about 25, 26. I wish I would learn learned about it sooner. The biggest thing about passive income is every just about every single business you could turn into a passive income business. Like my, my conference, the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, heavily labor intensive, but I hire other people. They love doing the work and they make, make great impact, but they're doing the work and it's more passive for me. For me, it's now changing my mindset from active employment, active income to passive income. The number one thing that you need to do is start looking for ways that make your time worth so much more. Instead of getting paid an hour, let's say you make $50 an hour and you get paid one time. Well, instead of that, figure out how you can then get paid over and over and over again. Like I said, I literally have five businesses and they all make me money in passive income. So get started sooner rather than later because it compounds. It builds on itself. Real estate investing is another passive income source, but sooner rather than later, number one. But number two, every business you could probably turn into a passive income business. You just need to learn and know how to do it. All right, let's lighten the mood, man. Uh, we talked about different businesses. Let's talk about restaurants. Uh, you're in Arizona. Give me your favorite place to grab a bite to eat. Oh, man. Okay, so my favorite place. Well, I'm going to give you one. I, so I'm half Japanese and I love Japanese food. There's a place called um, uh, Sushi Plus. Really, really good. But my wife, since we're in Arizona, she loves Mexican food. Her absolute favorite Mexican food place is called Top Shelf. There's only two locations, one in Phoenix, one in Peoria, where I live. Uh, but Mexican food at Top Shelf, that's my wife's absolute favorite. Love it, man. Sounds like two really good locations. Dustin, uh, great having you back on the show, man. You gave us some great insights just in your background, overcoming some of the challenges that you faced, and also just understanding what it takes to develop that mindset and, and more specifically, that identity shift so that you can be of the right mindset to go ahead and focus on being an investor, starting to tr make that transition from your W-2 world into being a, a full-time real estate investor, at least to start generating passive income. We talked about some of the challenges people face in that space, as well as just you know what it takes to be successful and some of the things that you did to surround yourself with the right individuals, the right lessons, uh, and all the things you're working on from the, from the podcast to the conference, uh, blog posts, and everything else that you're doing to help educate other people on how to master passive income. Again, if folks want to check out that free course you have it's masterpassiveincome.com slash free course uh your event's coming up here march 2024 in st louis so if you check that out make sure you check out the website as well Dustin, and do you mind if i give everybody yeah please I, I i would love to give everybody i'll give you every 10 percent off to come to the conference and remember this conference is all about giving it's all about helping people and so do you mind if i give everybody a 10 percent off sure, code please Awesome. So if you use the promo code podcast, it's simple. Use a promo code podcast. I'll know where you came from and it's going to give you 10% off. But if you go to R-E-W-B-C-O-N, so it's the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, R-E-W-B-C-O-N dot com rubcon.com use that promo code podcast and you'll and really what the conference came about was i had friends that are great podcasters other real estate investors said hey let's all come together 50 plus of us bring our audiences together and create a huge community of just giving people so i'd love to see everybody it's going to be in uh, march 14th through the 16th in 2024 in st louis and every year it changes so definitely keep coming back and most more than likely that same promo code will always be available because i just want to get people to change their lives by investing in real estate I love it, Dustin. I love it. Well, listen, great having you on the show today. I want to thank you for being a great guest, and we look forward to staying in touch with you. Have a good one, Dustin. Thanks, man.